We have been fishing with Taro Murata for some time now, and I keep telling him I want to catch a monster, huge fish. I want that amazing Instagram photo. So today he's taking me out, and we're going to catch a monster. Tell us how we're doing it. Okay, Jeff. Well, this is one of the easiest ways for someone uh, that's just starting out fishing, like yourself or an advanced angler, to catch a really big fish at their doorstep. We don't have to leave these small harbors. It could be big wind. The big salmon are in, and they're staging to go up river, and they're waiting for the rain so the river's high enough so they can run and spawn. But this is a magic window where the big fish are at our fingertips. Are you ready to get them on Let's your fingertips? It. Let's do it. On my fingertips. Let's on go. your fingertips. <laughs> 64 degrees, not ideal, it's good, but ideal, I like 58 degrees and lower. The fish seem to go bananas, but we're still gonna get them, I'm confident. Okay, Jack, this is why it's so easy to catch a big fish. All you gotta do is cast, and reel back in. That's it. Cat, that's it. And you're just gonna feel bang. No like ripping, jigging, mick twisting, nothing. Get your rod tip kind of up so you feel the vibration on the lure. For some reason, they kind of like the vibration. When your rod's up like that, it lets the lure wobble a little bit more. You didn't see it, did you? You're blind, baby. You're blind from the facts. You can't tell me what I can see. He's blind, baby. He's blind from the facts. Blind, I tell you, he never sees anything that I see. Thinks I'm lying. It's frustrating. So, so one time we can actually catch up using like bass tackle and almost like bass style lures to catch salmon on a cast. Normally you'll be out in 110 feet of water, down rigging or trolling or up river with a float. So you know, and so there's one of these little windows where it's just a magical time of the year. Right Jeff? No. He gave me not, not one answer at all. He has no love. I don't think he understands the magic or the beauty, but he will one day, one day. They are the strongest fish that we have here in Ontario. They only live four years, but in those four years, they eat everything in sight and they have so much power. Typically when you're fishing like this, sun going down and sun coming up is a really good time to do it. So if you're working all day and you still want to fish, great time, you know, after work, come out, take some casts, catch some fish. Oh, there we go. One jumped. Good news. They're still here. You got him! You got him, Jeff! Unbelievable, he's got him! Real, real. <laughs> Don't get easy, he's gonna run. Real, real, real a little bit. Okay, get your hand here, higher on the rod. Okay. Get it in here, get in your arm. There you go, now you have some control, you see? Keep your rod loaded in front of you, not behind you. There you go. I gave him the crappy lure on purpose because I wanted his lure, and there you go. Hopefully he doesn't go and eat these boats. But that's the nice thing about having to get him in a boat as opposed to shore, is the fact that we can kind of chase him down with a trolling motor. From shore, sometimes I remember, they just run underneath the boats and pilings, and you can't get them. They just break you off and break your heart. This is your biggest freshwater fish. Oh, 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 watch the engine. Yep, don't get underneath that engine. That's good, keep it clean. Good job, Jeff. He's dancing, he's dancing. Jeff, I think you're actually excited for once. Did you just give up eventually? No, he may, he may not. <laughs> this is a Canadian mud shark, also known as the Chinook Snammon in muddy harbors. Oh, oh, he's barely hooked. He's barely hooked. Take it easy. Don't muscle him on the short line. On the short line, they're easy to get off. You gotta baby him when he wants to run there. Key tip for anyone. I want at least eight feet from the fish to the rod tip. I see so many fish get lost when people reel too short to the fish. You gotta leave length so the rod has some sponge and give. You gotta be careful not to bend that hook too, right? It's only one hook, it's a big fish. One false move, your streams are broken. Oh, no, no, don't pull tight anymore, easy. That's a nightmare, he's barely hooked. What I want you to do though, when he gets tired kind of, you got to step backwards behind and then drag the fish towards me kind of by lifting up. I got to get him head first. Step backwards, pull the rod a little bit. I got him, I don't got him. I'm going to lose him. Got him, I got him, I got him, I got him, Jack. Jack, very good. That's your first fish. That's his first salmon. Whoa, 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 squeeze hard here. I'm squeezing. Lift here. You can see the fish. Oh, ah, Jack! Good one, man. This is a good one. Bro. This is a good one. This is a good one. 
There it is, Jeff. Unreal, man. He did it. He gave him a very good workout, Jeff. Sometimes if they're tilted sideways when they're tired, you just let them go. They'll float away sideways. It's good to get them like upright, so he's faced right in right, the right direction in the water, so that the water can go through the gills and they can revive and get his strength back properly. There you go. He went away. Hey! You did it. You can do it. Stop my monster. <laughs> you did it again. So when you're fishing for these big fish in these harbors, the one thing you want to think about, and one key concept with selecting a lure is just think noisy or bright. You know, you start with those noisy and bright, man, they love that. Something about this time of year when they're staging, annoying lures really make them angry and they snap at it. Right, Jefferson? Does this noise remind you of anyone? Or does this color remind you of anyone? Noisy and bright. I like to think of myself as noisy and bright and annoying. Does it want make you strike me? <laughs> so yeah, noisy and bright really provokes a bite. You know, remember that, noisy and bright provokes a bite. You know, and it could be any type of bill. I'm using bass style lures, jointed, kind of pike style lures, walleye banana shaped lures. You gotta kind of play around and just cast and reel it back in, it's so easy. And eventually they'll kind of dial in on one or two baits, you know. Sometimes they like these rattle baits and it's all about the rattle baits. If you're not getting bites, keep kind of changing, changing them around. I got an easy clip on here. I just unclip it, put another lure on, clip it, put another lure on, and sooner or later you find one or two that's really magical. So play around, but you know, a whole assortment of noisy and bright can't go wrong. <laughs>